So this is going to be my day two of um, working on Symphony 3. Um, this is the hardest part of the process, is the very beginning. Um, so let's see if I can uh, talk about exactly what I'm trying to do. Um, I have sketched out here on staff paper the general outline of uh, what I'm going to do in the symphony. It's going to be in 12 parts. Uh, and it's basically going to be a journey from sunset to sunrise. Each part represents a different hour in between. It's very similar to Strauss's Alpine Symphony, except it's a mirror image. The Alpine Symphony is from sunrise to sunset. This is from sunset to sunrise. So I'm going to use a little bit of the Alpine Symphony as a model, but not really copy it. Um, the other thing I'm, I'm going to be working on, and this is why this is the, the hardest thing, is light motifs. Uh, if you don't know what a light motif is, it's a theme that represents an idea, character, uh, place, thing. Uh, Wagner is the person who really developed these. And uh, I sat down today during lunch and I just started thinking, okay, what light motifs do I need? And as, as I'm brainstorming here, I get this really interesting idea that I was like, well, I, since we're going to start with the sunset and end with the sunrise, let's have a theme for the sun. Okay, that's easy. That's, that's you know, doable. Well, I guess I should, if I have one for the sun, I guess I should have one for the moon. What happens if they're the same light motif just turned upside down? Uh, this is this is intriguing. They're opposites. Turn them upside down. Different theme. Same structure. And then I said, well, what else could I do? The mountains, because it's about a setting of the mountain. What if I flip that upside down? The stars. So big mounds on the on the earth. Tiny points of light in the sky. And then the desert, and flip that, the rainstorm in the desert. And then peace and strife. And now, this is kind of where I'm standing now. I'm just going to be working out um, light motifs, probably for the next few days. Um, this is this may be the most challenging, because I really feel like I, this is a point when I want to sit down at a piano, and I don't have a piano. That's a bad composer, I, I know. No piano. Um, but that's that's where I'm standing now. And then I started just kind of thinking about the opening. This is... I, I'm stumped on the opening, to be perfectly honest. Um, I started looking through all the Strauss tone poems today to see how he opens. I started looking at all the Mahler symphonies today to see how he opened. And... I've got some ideas. There's a lot of different ways you can open up a symphony. Um, one is called the Call to Nature. The Call to Nature opening is best typified by the opening of Mahler 1. It's just this... It starts out eerie. It's just these octave A's within the strings. And it's just this peaceful, eerie, and then it builds to our first theme. Uh, the other way is to just barrel right on into it. And something like that is... Um, Beethoven 5. Ba-ba-ba-bam. Ba-ba-ba-bam. Just 
aggressive start and I, I have to toy with what I'm doing. Well, the idea is it is a sunset that we're starting with. So it is both grand and nature and my idea right now is to actually combine the two. So have both a call to nature and a, a, a call to action, basically. So combine the two. And if I can figure out how to do it, I think it could be really effective to really just meld the two together. And so here's going to be my challenge. I thought about how I did uh, Flower Moon in one week. It's a, it was a six minute piece or so. This is going to be a much bigger piece. If I do the same kind of challenge, I think 12 weeks is really a good time frame. 12 weeks. And each section will take a week. That means I've got until Saturday to write the opening. Um, and... If I put each of those sections at around five minutes, in 12 weeks I could have a 60 minute long symphony, one hour. That would be uh, uh, quite a bit longer than Symphony 2, Forest of Dreams. I don't mind having it longer. I don't think it's going to be as big though, because we all know, if you've watched this channel enough, Symphony 2 is huge. This is going to be a big piece, but I don't think it's going to be the record breaker. So. That's where I'm sitting today on Monday. Um, I don't have a single note written down. Well, yeah, I do, but I don't like those notes. So I'm going to, tomorrow is going to be a, a sit down and get to work day. Today was a brainstorm day. And once I've got my light motifs done, I really think that I'll be able to just start composing like water flows or not so that's where we're standing today so i'm in composer mode today um the the goal today is to start trying to figure out some light motifs um i mentioned in the video yesterday a light motif is just a, a theme that represents an idea place object person um and I also mentioned I don't have a piano, uh, so I have to go with the instrument I'm most comfortable with. I know I don't bring the bassoon out very often, but desperate times call for desperate measures. Um, so let, let me walk you through my uh, thinking process, because it's a great place to be. Anyway, um, when I think uh, sunset sunrise i automatically go to a handful of keys the most uh, band unfriendly keys unfortunately uh, b major um e major f sharp major you know and so that lovely f sharp and i just like the intensity of that note uh, granted, I'm not going to be putting the opening theme on Bassoon. Uh, Bassoon's going to be doing something else, but the idea is there. Um, so I'm going to just kind of play around for a few minutes, and I think I'm, I'm close to figuring out the, uh, the main uh, first light motif. And I'm actually going to play around in B minor for now, and then eventually it'll work its way to B major.
think I like that. Uh, that real strong. Um, because the opening of this is I'm going to be doing something that, as far as I know, no other, maybe one other band piece has ever done. And that's going to be used, Wagner Tuben. And that's the sound I want to open up this, this symphony. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. And that's going to be my, uh, my A theme. All right, I've got that uh, notated now. It's uh, roughly a six bar phrase, and that should be absolutely perfect. It's simple enough. It's basically a, a B minor triad that gets ornamented a little bit. There's a spot where it, it starts highlighting uh, G major that I really quite like. Um, but otherwise, it's, it's simple. And I want to start off with something uh, simple because from there I can embellish it. I don't want to start off with something that is just completely... Uh, florid and already expounded upon. Start simple, build from there. And something as simple as this melody here I think really works. Um, now, uh, something I mentioned in the last video is what I'd like to do is take basically four main light motifs and then have a mirror image of them. So this is the, the sunrise, sunset motif. Um, and then it, it flip that and I'm going to get the moon motif. And that I'll need to do just simply sitting down and paper and kind of working that out. So that's going to be pretty simple to do though. I've been playing around with that original uh, sun theme all, um, all day. And you know, there are some similarities to uh, one of Wagner's light motifs from the ring, but um, otherwise, I think it works pretty well. Let me go ahead and play the, the sun theme again. Now, I'm going to take that same thing and I'm going to reverse it. Turn it upside down and flip it. This is going to be the moon theme. crack notes here and there but it's a much more gentle theme and it's it's very different in character and I really like those is the you know the opposites of one another <laughs> So I think those are the first two leitmotifs of the symphony, the sun and the moon theme. Now I just got to get the next one done. So it's now a Saturday night. I did not do an update uh, throughout the week, basically from Wednesday on. Uh, part of that is we had a major ice storm here in Texas. And I was without power for about a day. So uh, I had to deal with that. That uh, became much more pressing there. Uh, anyway, uh, status report on the symphony. Uh, I currently have about two and a half minutes of the symphony written. And I hate every second of it. Which means that tonight... Within the first week, I'm pre pretty much going to start over from the beginning. Um, the the good thing is I have really fleshed out the ideas more of where I want to go. I have the mot motives, the motives written, and so I I mean I'm going to have to start over from from the beginning again, and it's. It feels like a lost week, but um, that's how it goes. And if it doesn't start out right, it, it will not work. Uh, like I, I said uh, earlier, um, the beginning has to be right. And so 
As much as it pains me, I'm going to delete all, however many minutes of music I have now, start over and just approach from a completely different direction because what I have now is not working. But for the first time since I've begun it, I can actually hear the introduction in my head, which is a good sign. Uh, before, um, really before this afternoon, this week, I, I never heard the opening. I had vague ideas of what it needed to be, but now I've finally got the the idea where it needs to be and it's going to be a it's going to be an opening unlike any I've done before and I'm going to need to go do some score study on that and hopefully I can actually uh get in the next couple days back to where I am now as far as notes on the page so I wish I could say something further, but that is a composition that is best. Sometimes it is failure. So, yeah, I um, am going to have to start completely over. But I know where I'm going now. That, that, that helps.